Welcome back to part two of our video series on the origins of the indigenous peoples of America. In this episode, we're going to delve into alternative theories that challenge traditional views on human migration. Get ready to explore the mysteries surrounding the coastal migration theory, the pre-Clovis hypothesis, and the controversial Salutrian hypothesis. Before we dive into these theories, let's quickly recap what we covered in part one. We explored the traditional narrative of human migration from Asia to the Americas, primarily through the Bering Land Bridge. But what if there's more to the story? Let's find out. Our first theory, the coastal migration theory, offers a fascinating alternative perspective. Imagine early humans traversing the vast coastlines of the Pacific using boats or small watercraft. This hypothesis suggests that maritime migrations might have occurred alongside or even before the land bridge migrations across Beringia. According to this theory, ancient humans embarked on their journey in northeastern Asia, possibly in regions like Siberia. From there, they would have navigated along the coastlines, exploring and settling different regions as they made their way southward towards the Americas. Archaeologists and scientists are still piecing together the exact starting and ending points of this journey. The coastal migration theory challenges the notion that the Bering Land Bridge was the primary route for human migration into the Americas. Proponents argue that maritime migrations could have played a crucial role, providing alternative pathways for ancient exploration and settlement. So, what evidence supports this theory? Archaeological discoveries, such as early coastal sites and indications of seafaring capabilities, shed light on the adaptability and resourcefulness of ancient populations. One significant example is the Monte Verde site in Chile, where artefacts and structures dating back over 14,000 years have been unearthed. This predates the well-known Clovis culture and suggests a long-standing human presence in the Americas. By hugging the coastlines, early humans had access to diverse marine resources like fish, shellfish and marine mammals. These provided a consistent and reliable food source, supporting human survival and settlement along coastal regions. Additionally, the milder climates and diverse ecological niches along the coast might have offered favourable conditions for long-term habitation. While the coastal migration theory challenges the traditional narrative, another theory pushes the boundaries even further. Let's explore the pre-Clovis hypothesis. The pre-Clovis theory challenges the long-held belief that the Clovis culture represents the earliest human presence in the Americas. It suggests that humans arrived in the Americas prior to the emergence of the Clovis culture, calling for a re-evaluation of migration timelines and routes. Traditionally, the Clovis culture has been considered the hallmark of the earliest human presence in the Americas. However, archaeological sites such as Monte Verde in Chile and Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania have provided evidence of human occupation that predates the Clovis era. This challenges the notion of a single wave of migration and suggests that multiple groups of early humans arrived through different routes and at various times. The study of ancient DNA and genetic research has also contributed to the pre-Clovis theory. Genetic analyses of ancient human remains have revealed genetic diversity and ancestral connections that predate the Clovis era. These findings further support the presence of early human populations in the Americas before the emergence of the Clovis culture. While the pre-Clovis theory expands our understanding of early human migrations, there's one more theory that has stirred controversy and intrigue, the Salutrian hypothesis. The Salutrian hypothesis proposes a connection between the Salutrian culture of Europe, approximately 20,000 years ago, and the peopling of the Americas. This theory suggests that some early European populations crossed the North Atlantic ice sheets, contributing to the genetic diversity of indigenous populations in the Americas. Proponents of the Salutrian hypothesis argue that similarities between Salutrian and Clovis stone tools indicate cultural contact between Europe and America. However, skeptics point out that similar stone tool techniques and forms can also arise independently due to environmental challenges or functional requirements. Despite its intriguing aspects, the Salutrian hypothesis lacks substantial genetic, archaeological and linguistic evidence to support the direct transatlantic migration of Salutrian populations. Genetic studies consistently show connections with East Asia, supporting the prevailing theory of migration from Siberia across Beringia. 
to unravel the complexities of early human migrations in the Americas, continued research and the integration of multiple disciplines are crucial. As archaeologists, geneticists and linguists collaborate, we hope to gain more insights into the true origins and migration patterns of the indigenous peoples of America. So, to summarize our journey today, the coastal migration theory challenges the traditional land bridge narrative, the pre-Clovis theory expands our understanding of early migrations, and the Salutrian hypothesis stirs controversy but lacks strong supporting evidence. As we continue to explore the mysteries of human migration, we encourage you to join the conversation. Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content. Thank you for watching this episode of Legacy of the Unknown. We'll see you next time as we delve deeper into the mysteries of our shared history.